Hi everyone and welcome to What A Flanker Series 2. Now I'm joined by Graham Tomlinson today, known as the fitness chef. Are you a chef and are you into fitness? Well, that's a bit debatable. Um, I'm not a chef and fitness over the last four months has been quite low as well. So yeah, I think like maybe maybe changing that name quite soon. <laughs> so, so we've already started the podcast, we're only running a couple of seconds and you're already fr- defrauding the people out there. You're not a, sh- you're not a chef yeah. and you're not training at the moment. All of a sudden my entire Instagram account and the books are under question. Within 14 seconds, that's yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. Destroying careers since 2020. Um, Obviously, um, the reason I wanted to get you on is that you are um, someone who's very vocal about nutrition, uh, the understanding of nutrition. Do you want to tell uh, my audience who might not be familiar with you exactly who you are and what you do? So, yeah, I, I've been a personal trainer for about seven years. Um, always had a keen background in sport. I played cricket to a reasonably high level, which seems a bit strange coming from Scotland, I know. Um, and, you know, playing at a decent level, you'll obviously know things like trainings and strength and conditioning are paramount you know and so always had a keen interest in that and when it transpired that I wasn't going to be particularly great at cricket I wasn't going to make a career out of it the natural progression for me was just to become a personal trainer because I was really interested in it um I've been going to the gym for years and you know did that went over to Australia was playing cricket being a personal trainer and did that for about three or four years one-on-one clients and enjoyed it but always wanted to build something online because you know how many personal trainers do you know that are you know 45 you know, <laughs> people want people that are young um so i'm not 45 by the way i might might look at that <laughs> um so i was kind of thinking for for a couple of years i was doing this instagram thing where i was posting you know recipe pictures and just hoping it would take off and it didn't and i don't know why i kept going but i'm happy that i did and eventually after a couple of years of that, I started posting graphics, which you probably know from, from my feed. And the idea behind it was just to simplify all the bullshit that we see out there regarding nutrition um, and really give people simple instructions, simple advice, evidence-based advice, um, letting people know a little bit more about the food they're eating as opposed to just assuming what they hear in the media is is gospel. And yeah, built from there. I think the reason it became so successful is that people kind of already knew what I was saying so they kind of agreed with it and it's just kind of reinforcing that actually yeah you just need a calorie deficit to lose weight and wow yeah a handful of nuts has got twice the calories as you know a small bit of chocolate so I can have some chocolate and it just sort of grew from there that's been sort of three years now of, of building that and it's led to you know a couple of books um and this things like this podcast with yourself so um yeah it's kind of been a slow burner but i'm kind of yeah that's the the long story i mean what a story starting as a cricketer in scotland all those well-known sunny days that you have up there i mean that was an interesting just to get choice. this out there yeah just to get this out there my my entire career of playing up here as a batsman my average was absolutely dreadful <laughs> you know one season i played down in yorkshire Average 46 wow. for the whole season. Just getting that out there. You know, if I actually had some decent pitches to work with, I could have been you know, playing for England. But, but I can imagine, I can imagine, <laughs> I can imagine that uh, there aren't many people who play cricket in Scotland. So, like, I can imagine they've got the selector pick the team on just the people who turned up. So there was like, oh, 11 people turned up. Like, funny you should say that. You're actually in the team. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to do some trials. Like, no, you're in. Here's your bat. Here's your ball. Go out and play. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Funny you should say that. In, in Aberdeen up here, at one point, they were claiming they had the second most populated um, city for cricket in the world because it's such a, a small city. And there were so many people playing cricket here, which is bizarre. But I don't think it's the case anymore. People wised up that, you know, your entire Saturday, you're better off, you know, playing golf, yeah. watching rugby, um, watching Scotland beating rugby stuff well, like that. I'm not sure. yeah I know that <laughs> I knew you were going to get that in there <laughs> I was waiting just no. biding my time 
there's a correlation between you, you retiring in Scotland faring better in the Calcutta Cup so maybe you should get a <laughs> yes to, I'd like to uh, claim that do you <laughs> know what I mean I know it's my podcast and I'm basically in charge of what I say and in the world where we, we I mean we're going to talk about this later on about social media we can pretty much say anything uh, if you say it convincingly enough without any sort of evidence to back it up you can just get away with it now so yes that is exactly why England yeah. the gash is because I'm not playing anymore copyright James Haskell don't argue with me yeah. uh, otherwise I just shout you down um so with the with the you are known for those kind of those um those food graphics so you you sort of went along the usual path of that every other trainer does which was you know trying to put out content here's what I'm eating here's something and it just didn't stick and then you sort of found this what I want to talk to you about today is just the, the education around um, diet and nutrition. This is what really captured people's imaginations. Yeah, definitely. I think you've got a good point. A lot of uh, say influencers, I don't count myself as an influencer, I'm more of like a coach, um, almost talk at people, so in, in, inflict information, as opposed to try and kind of give people an understanding and talk with them. So in a lot of my posts, I'm not instructing people to do anything and basically, you know, displaying information there. And I'm saying, look, this is this is how it is. You know, it's up to you if you want to, you know, follow that advice. And as I said before, it's all very simple stuff. And it's all stuff that people probably knew anyway. And we've got so many crazy diets going around that it's almost like a safe place for some people to come and just, you know, follow the basics at the end of the day. Now, why my wife, who I steal most of my good ideas and content from, obviously you guys have, um, I was about to say have a relationship in co- out of context, That's, <laughs> that sounds uh, quite odd, but I've obviously, um, you know, you featured on her, uh, the podcast, which is a far, far better and more professional um, health and fitness based podcast than this is, but why, why I really wanted to get you on was that I did a rant, uh, for those of people who follow me on um, social media, I did a rant about uh, me working for Grenade. So the context of this story is I, I'm sponsored by Grenade um, and we pro, uh, protested initially to keep the gyms open uh, and then latterly talked about um, a workout to help out scheme, encouraging people to, and the government to invest in health and fitness to, uh, if we're healthier, we're much more likely to fight off diseases, um, including things like cancer and everything else. Like if you've got more muscle mass, look after yourself. But also I did an advert for McDonald's and their new click and collect um, feature, right? And everybody was like, you can't fucking do that. You idiot, right? And it went really hard at me. You sort of got getting into me and this whole sort of subsection of, I'm going to describe them as virgins um, because they're not here, to protect, not here to defend themselves. Subsection of these people were, couldn't understand how I could um, ask to keep the gyms open and also promote uh, a specific thing about McDonald's because people do not understand that there are no such thing as good foods and bad foods. And I did this rant and it went viral. It's the biggest video I've ever done. It had over well over a million views. I picked up 30,000 followers overnight. People were like, right, you know, they thought I was like the white knight riding in to break the bullshit up. But actually, you've been doing this for, for quite a while. And this is your kind of whole shtick, which is explaining basic nutrition to people, but giving an understanding that we just don't seem to have. And I want to put a statement out there and see if you agree with it and sort of expand on it. I don't think the majority of people have any idea how to eat what nutrition is about have any understanding of what they need to do to change their body and couldn't fucking tell you what a carbohydrate protein and fat source was do you agree or disagree yeah i i think i agree to an extent with that um that's evident by the fact that we have this you know horrible obesity you know problem going on and a lot of, some of that is self-inflicted some of that is you know obviously socioeconomic and we need to empathise with, with, with that aspect as well, um, but yeah, I think it, it, it. You know, if you if you ask the government, you know, what are they doing about this? Their schemes are to get people to go to swimming clubs um, and you know their NHS app or whatever it is, which doesn't tell people the principle. I always say you have to start with the basics before you can expand. If you don't know how to add, subtract, and multiply, how are you going to be able to do that you know if you don't know how to add one plus one how are you going to be able to sort of you know build you know count your bank account so to speak so when people don't understand that you require a calorie deficit to lose weight that's where they all these other things become attractive like slimming clubs or ridiculous tv shows and so when you go and ask them when when they come to you and say i'm doing such and such and such and such and i'm not losing weight it's like well 
do you understand what a calorie deficit is? It's like, well, kind of. And it's, 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 you know, the government could do a lot more, in my opinion, to simplify that message. I think they're possibly a little bit worried about oversimplifying it for people. And they, they're a bit worried that people require something that's more appealing. Um, but yeah, if, if you were to ask them what, I mean, I sometimes do these quizzes on my Instagram, really basic questions. Um, like how, what's got more calories, you know, coconut oil or butter and things. People get these things wrong. Um, so just understanding when they're cooking, you know, lobbing in 30 grams of coconut oil, you know, hundreds of calories. And people think, you know, it's been advertised as this fat loss food. It's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You, you could have eaten a, a 450 calorie meal, but all of a sudden it's, you know, 700 calories and you, you've not even counted the coconut oil. So all these little things that people don't appreciate, the simplest of things, um, unfortunately, that's kind of where a lot of people are, are going wrong. And I saw your McDonald's uh, rant and I thought it was, you know, brilliant, you know, a little bit tough, but but you need to kind of be that extreme to get your message out there. If you look at some of the, the biggest voices in the fitness industry, the likes of, you know, James Smith, his videos are you know, lots of swearing, you know, poking the bear a little bit, but you kind of need that clickbait to get people's attention, to drag them in, to educate them. And sometimes I feel that with my posts as well. It's, you know, comparing avocado to Nutella and people get outraged like they were with your McDonald's advert because you can't possibly eat Nutella and be healthy or lose weight. It's like you can't eat McDonald's. But actually you're, you're dragging them in and you're educating them a little bit. I really enjoy your your um, face your sort of Instagram page purely because it's not like other people's Instagram pages out there. You know, and I'm sure you have got rippling abs, but it's not the gratuitous kind of self promotion. It is purely you're like, no, no, I haven't, James. I haven't. You see, but no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, all I can see is your head. So as far as I can say, and people will yeah. either be listening. This is is an audio podcast, or will be watching it online. So as long as they can't see the body, just tell them you've got an absolute six pack for days, but you don't want to show it because yeah, washboard. Washboard. You're not that kind of guy. You don't want to be arrogant and uh, put it out there. But your, your 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 page is different. But it is interesting you say that it courts the same kind of reaction because. I obviously went hard in that video. Yes, and it was hard, and, and, it, and, it, and it wasn't intentional. It's kind of how I how I naturally am. But I think in your industry, um, it seems to be to get the message across. You're having to go more and more extreme. Do you think? Do you think that's? A, do you think that's a good thing, or do you think that there's a more considered approach like you, like you're doing? If the message is extreme to start with, and it's extreme from start to finish, I don't think that's helpful. Um, but if your message is extreme to, to you know, get people to listen to you and you're actually giving them some balanced advice, absolutely fine. It's, um, it's kind of like a newspaper, isn't it? You know, the headline, it's like, oh, you know, <clears throat> James Haskell scores three tries or whatever. I'll have a look at that. Sounds and true. Sounds like and, something would go happen. Going and find England won 90 nil or something. <laughs> so, <is it? laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I think, I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, but I think there's a lot of extreme messaging on social media and I don't know if you've seen kind of recently the kind of anti-diet movement or health at any size it's got a lot of validity in the kind of moral uh, messaging behind it and that people shouldn't be forced to change their body if they don't want to however <clears throat> a lot of those people are actually disputing the fact that being being obese or being overweight they're disputing the fact that it's actually healthier to be in that state than not which the science simply doesn't back up probably. i would describe those people as morons just out there yeah i think it's it's cherry picking of evidence so you know some of these people will come out and say 95 percent of diets fail so that means all diets fail and including things like calorie deficits fail and it's like hang on a calorie deficit isn't a diet it's you know it's a, a physiological the only physiological means you can lose lose weight it's not a diet it's just evolution it's how we were built um so a lot there's a lot of kind of misunderstanding in that uh but i think to get their message out they think they have to be extreme as well but it's when people start getting science into it and kind of cherry picking and not not realizing that there's a lot of people out there that have seen the, the, the whole science and ju can just pick it apart it is fascinating though because we're talking about quite a lot of messages in, in that sort of part is that it seems to me that if you simply explain to somebody 
that to lose weight or to change your body, and, and this is a really valid point, and it's something I always hammer home. Nobody should ever tell you what you should look like or what what is the correct body image, right? And I think I said this before: is that you know, if you have someone that is morbidly obese or someone who is is you know super skinny with clear eating disorder, if they are comfortable being comfortable with themselves and how they look. I think that's fantastic. Like, being happy with yourself is a rarity. Even, you know, I'll show you the, the the hottest, most successful, wealthiest celebrity in the world, and they're riddled with insecurity. And being comfortable with yourself is 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 really commendable. But don't advocate that that is healthy. They don't you know you don't advocate that you know that being a rock star is a healthy lifestyle. On the surface, they have everything they want, but they don't. It's not a necessarily healthy lifestyle. And I think that this is where we're getting confused. And you know, for example, I remember the, the seeing the the, the big um, the woman, the obese woman on the front cover of that magazine. And everyone lost their lost their plot, and there's lots of extreme videos came out about it. And the simple fact is, she's unhealthy. You don't you don't you know, I don't care. I don't need to be a doctor. I don't need to have a PhD to to tell you that she's unhealthy. The amount of visceral fat around her, the fact she's obese, that that state is not good. Just as you know. Um, fashion labels using size zero models who clearly have eating disorders you know exposed collarbones ribs and everything else that that is that is perpetuating something so people can be like that but don't advocate it being healthy and i i'm astounded that we've actually had to go extreme in all this stuff because i don't think people um want to actually believe simplicity it's got to be more complicated than just eating less and working more yeah that the messaging is is very extreme you know, on both sides, if you look at in the fitness industry, you know, until recently, it's been about six packs and bodybuilders. And like you say, I, you know, I've never, never done that. But I've heard stories that a lot of them are borderline having eating disorders. They've certainly got disordered eating, that's for sure. Um, and just being really unhappy and being in a, in a really poor mental and physical space. And these are the people that are advising people about health and giving them, you know, plans to follow so it does perpetuate it and, and then on the other side of it whilst it's impossible to prove that everyone who's overweight or obese has has got health problems at that stage it certainly does increase the risk you cannot ignore that and what i find is a lot of these um influencers who are pushing um health at any size is i think it's fantastic that they are comfortable and happy within themselves but a lot of them are quite young i found so a lot in, in their 20s and it might take you know until they're 30 40 for these condition health conditions to start to materialize things like type 2 diabetes and and then it gets to the point where hang on there there is a problem would they retrospectively have gone back and kind of changed their mind about a few things i'm not sure perhaps not um but it becomes slightly dangerous when those individuals are inspiring other people to not kind of even contemplate the idea that they they might have um you know poor health as a result of their physical condition um you know it's, it's that kind of debate the, the the morality of it versus the science and it's people are always going to use you know both of them and kind of mix them up a little bit to suit their agenda really um that's so Media, do you think the lack of ability for people to stick to stuff is because they just don't understand the fundamentals around just even you know what what a protein source is, what a carbohydrate source is, what a fat source is, and the differing amounts of calories between them? I think so. I, I once had a client when I was still doing one to one PT a few years ago who came in and was warming up, and he, I think he got this nutrition plan from someone else online, um, and he just ignored mine. And I was like, cheers for that. But he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been eating lots of you know protein things, things like broccoli. I'm like, what? Broccoli is not a source of protein. Um, <laughs> where did you get that from? So yeah, this is a, an educated guy. You know, I think he's like a director at a company. Um, and yeah, people just don't don't understand. You know what a calorie is. You know, people always talk about empty calories and good calories, bad calories. It's like, what are you talking about? Calorie, a calorie is a unit of measurement. It can't be empty. It's just, it's just energy. That's what it is. What you actually mean is, you know, you're looking at macronutrients and micronutrients. So, like a donut versus an avocado. The avocado, the macronutrients are filled with micronutrients, um, like vitamins and minerals, whereas the donut doesn't have that. Both calorie sources, not, neither of them are empty. You know, they're just different foods. <laughs> so it's just understanding that, but. Um, a lot of people 
yeah, like you say, they, they, they get the fear with food because they don't understand about it. Um, and they assume things because they hear things, you know. Mavis next door says you can't eat bread if you want to lose weight. And it's like, I don't know why I said Mavis. It's... <laughs> Have you got a name called Mavis? I always I always pluck out the most uh, like obscure names. Ethel. And Ethel down the road. Betty down the road. Yeah, I love I loved doing that. It's, it's great, great to use examples of obscure, obscure names. I think it's it's really annoying and you'll probably see on social media that people get into their tunnel vision mindset and you get to the point where I'm actually advising people and they won't listen to me <laughs> because they know best, but actually they're still, they still don't know. Um, so I'll say, so people will, will message me and say, I'm trying to lose weight. I, I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, the first thing you need to understand is you need to be in a calorie deficit. You know, you need to work out you know, go on a calorie calculator, work that out, and then build that calorie deficit into as many of your preferences as possible. For example, foods you enjoy, activities you like doing. And then they'll come back and they'll say, yeah, but what about carbs? You know, I heard you know, that carbs are bad. And, oh, that calorie target seems too high, too high. I don't think that. Am I in starvation mode? Am I eating too little? And all this kind of junk going on in their head that's totally obscuring the simplicity of this. It's It's... And it's it's frustrating, but you know, obviously, with one post at a time, that's what I'm trying to sort of rectify, along with a few others in the industry. Um, it's bizarre. It that doesn't help. Yeah, it's bizarre that, that they have no understanding, but then they have too much information, like um, about everything else. There's like snippets of just information, but there isn't one solid, almost gold standard approved method. Even though there is, people just don't understand. The differences today because that's why as we said you get you get these kind of mad diets like what's your what's the, the biggest myth or the consistent myth you keep having to to bust when it comes to nutrition it's probably the 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 one that everybody's heard of that carbs make you fat um which is just false you know there was a, a tweet last week by uh kind of a news presenter i'm not gonna not gonna name it but he, he just tweeted carbohydrates cause obesity the end and it was just the audacity of it it's like number one who are who are you to comment on this you know where did you do you know where did you get your education on nutrition number two here is about 18 different studies that disprove this um, not least the the rice diet experiment where participants ate only rice i think it was back in the 50s or 60s um but they ate in a calorie deficit and guess what they lost weight um, so yeah, where he got that from, but again, that's going out to thousands of people and people will look at that and go, yeah, I've heard that carbs cause, cause obesity. So yeah, I'll probably not eat carbs anymore. So yeah, there's that one. Um, there's the whole kind of keto thing feeds into that as well, where you're sort of trying to cut out carbs and eat fat to burn fat. Um, but actually it's, you're only burning fat because you're eating lots of fat. You're, you're burning dietary fat. You're not burning body fat body fat at the end of the day it doesn't matter what ratio of calories you consume you will you know you will not burn more 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 fat unless you're in a calorie deficit um and yes you can get into the the nuance of it and things like protein for example you burn more calories di digesting that than carbs and fat but it's not overly significant um, that's why a high protein diet is always a good idea if you want to to lose weight because it will fill you up and um burn more calories really that's what chloe always help says you maintain maintain a muscle mass yeah yeah chloe obviously listen you know, to chloe <laughs> yeah so listen to chloe she basically always talks about um you know when you're in a uh, in a calorie deficit what's really important is your protein first fiber second five you know obviously a for your digestion but you know eating high fiber foods are much more likely to fill you up um as opposed to you know if you have a big bowl of 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 uh, you know, cruciferous veg and, and everything else like that, along with your meal, that's going to fill you up. So you're not going to finish your food and go, oh my God, um, I've eaten a lean protein, I've eaten this, I've eaten my carbs, but I'm still hungry. Let's go and eat a pile of chocolate cake. Um, so that's quite an interesting uh, tip. Yeah, though. yeah. It's, it's The behavioral aspect is really important. So like you say, there are feelings of satiety and feeling full. It's very simple. It's just going to make it less likely that you're going to go and eat further calories. Um, and as, as Chloe says, they're a high protein diet, lots of fiber. Um, scientists don't quite know why it fills people up more, but it does. Um, and in, in lots of the research and, you know, anecdotally, people, if you ask them, do you feel fuller after these meals? 
they'll probably say yes. But interestingly, there was a study done a while ago on the most filling foods. And unsurprisingly, you know, lean protein sources were right up there. But guess what the most kind of filling food was in that in that study? Potatoes. Really? Boiled potatoes, yeah. So whether if the potatoes were mashed or in chips or whatever, I'm not sure if it would have been the same, but boiled potatoes were quite a bit higher than everything else, which I was really surprised at. Do you think one of the biggest misunderstandings is uh, around the calorie content of fats? Because a lot of your posts, when you look at them, and then there was a really good one, actually, and it's something I've talked about before. And you know, I'll give you an example. So so I'm Sharon. Sharon's in the office. So Sharon's looking... I'm, she's looking across at me, and I'm having whatever I'm having for, for lunch. And it's, you know, I don't know. I say I'm having a sandwich or something. I have homemade, and I've got chicken. I've got meat in there. I've got something else. And then you look over at Sharon, and Sharon's tutting and looking down her nose at me because she's got a big bowl of salad. Right, but on her salad, she has got avocado because that's healthy we know about avocado that's healthy load of nuts because that's healthy we know that's healthy seeds because that's healthy people have that Co she covered that shit in chia it's the chia out there but we, we know that's really healthy and then <laughs> and then we've got a liberal drizzling of um olive oil right covered that in there and she's eating that salad and she thinks she is smart as hell right and then i Put my sandwich down. I lean across to to Sharon. I say, Sharon, you're eating 800 calories of salad. I'm eating I'm eating 300 calories of sandwich. Like you're not, but you're not being clever. That for me is the most common thing that I see. That actually trying to be healthy because they don't understand with what's actually in their in their meal. <laughs> They're eating far more calories than they ever need to. Is that something you see? And do you think that's the one of the biggest errors about that people just don't understand that fats contain way more calories than anything else? Yeah, definitely. Be because there are so many beneficial sources of fats, things like, you know, nuts, avocado, um, olive oil, uh, oily fish that provide you with a lot of, you know, nutritional benefits. I think it's it's People are, are very, just simply don't understand that calories as a unit of, of energy is one thing and micronutrients are another thing. So both of them are really important. So that salad that's loaded with lots of vitamins and minerals <clears throat> is absolutely fantastic for functional health. But as you say, if it's extremely high in calories, you know, like a thousand calories or something, over time, yeah, that could contribute to, to gaining weight. So it's just understanding those two different facets and I think people don't people mix them up people assume that if something is called healthy and what does healthy even mean it's it's going to be good for all aspects of health including losing weight one thing to, to yeah. flag up to my to listeners and people is that if you have an eating disorder or you have an obsessive personality what a lot of people do is um you'll see it uh, in recovering pe uh, uh, people with eating disorders is that they'll then go from not eating to becoming obsessive about training and then become they change one obsession for another obsession absolutely and uh while some kind of dietary interventions or um dietary methods can trigger eating disorders or disordered eating um sometimes yeah the individual is, is going to obsess over something um so perhaps they have an obsessive personality and counting calories becomes that obsession it's not necessarily calorie counting that, that's caused it but in other cases the calorie counting could then build and build and build and become more obsessive it, a lot of it is to do with the, the personality as well but a lot of the dietary interventions that are extreme don't help <laughs> at all what like give an example of like a dietary an extreme dietary intervention well that <laughs> the list of programs that was on that uh, show last last month was it um how to lose weight well, I think, on, on Channel 4, where you know, it's like the coffee diet, the chocolate diet, just ridiculous concepts where, you know, it's like, yes, you all you can have is coffee. And by the way, you've got to fast for 24 hours. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and people are doing these things and understandably are very, very miserable. Um, and they, they think they have to do these extreme things and extreme diets lead to extreme thought processes and that can lead to things like eating disorders quite quite easily um and the obsessive you know training part of it is certainly certainly part of it as well the, the idea that I think it was a program on, on the bbc last year where they counted the calories eaten by participants and then had loads of people in another room burning away those calories on treadmills they were kind of saying you know you, you need to burn away these calories or this is how many calories you need, this is what you need to do to burn the calories from that meal. 
And then you had people hammering the treadmill to burn 700 calories. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, that's not the idea here. You, you do not need to do that. <laughs> you know, uh, hang on a minute. I'll go, I'll go in a roar to burn away this meal because you think, you think you've been bad by eating a meal, so you must go and obsessively burn it away. No, I'll just go to bed, thanks, and burn the calories away during my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because also people forget that again but that, that's another thing around exercise because what I, what I want to do is we, we, we you know i want to spend because there's more i want to talk about with these extremes and then what i want to do is plot a way forward with you but i, I don't think we i don't think we finished off in my mind slagging everything off and just raising awareness because hopefully something we've said in this first part is going to resonate and click with someone you know the training thing's interesting people forget that you you burn more from your neat your non uh act, your non activity thermogenesis by like me moving my hands while i'm talking to you here me walking here me getting up the stairs you're going to burn more calories doing that than you would in a training session throughout the day people don't know that right so you said yeah. well you're burning calories when you're sleeping it is clear from what you and i are saying and i'm and i know it's easy to go on extreme online and i'm not i'm not gonna put you in a position of being extreme but i will say something i think you can't go um at the speed of the slowest man in society or in anything anymore you cannot you know yes you're going to trigger people with eating disorders yes people are going to fall off the wagon but i genuinely believe if we don't start educating people and explaining people this stuff's going to get worse because the snippets of information lead to more misinformation lead to more confusion and i would love and this is what i was advocating saying on the radio i would love to see them do li literal new uh, nutrition classes in school where where you're there taught to cook they are taught what calories are. They are taught what um, you know how calories actually burn, how your body works, the different varieties of of way that your body utilizes that energy. I would want them to understand that um, you know if you even for men. So there's a massive thing about bigorexia, and I think so much will be solved by this. I'm a bit a bit ranty, but apologize. So much will be solved by this because you've got loads of men. Uh, the pressure to feel to be bigger in shape. They don't understand how to do it. They want shortcuts. They do a load of gear. Right, they, and, and then they, they blow the. You know, I was talking to a, a hormone specialist the other day, and he was saying he's got a load of 19, 20, 21 year olds and, and, and slightly older watching Love Island, all these things, wanting to get in shape. They pile in a load of testosterone, and they blow up their testosterone receptors in their head. They overload them to the point where they don't get lust anymore. So they're just not. They're just not horny. Their libido completely disappears, and they're unsure as to whether they're ever going to get it back. That's a twenty two year old, twenty three year old who can't get can't get excited about having a shag which is the best time to get excited about a shag and you can't you, you can't do that you've then got um the people advocating just not dieting at all because people fail but in the the, the sort of opening f sort of 40 minutes we talked about here there is no like, there is so much bits of bits of information being thrown around there is no consistency and and yet there is actual consistency there is <laughs> actual science that we can we can back up, which is very simple. You know, th the body needs calories. And yes, when, and I was interested, you said about not all calories are, people say that, you know, empty calories. I think sometimes they mean that your body uses more energy to burn the, the, the uh, you digest the calorie than that thing's worth. So, like, you know, people talk about celery or whatever. If you, that's what they call uh, empty calories. It just means that your body, you know, different things require different energy to digest it. It means that actually by the time you've done it, you've actually burnt off that amount of, of stuff or whatever. It, I just find it so fascinating so if you if i can empower you to plot a, like a like a, a way through what would be your like key basics for people who are listening to this podcast to set up a, a i'm not gonna use the word diet because diet implies that you can fail and it's like some optional thing where we all eat beige food what would you what would you say or like your keys just to trying to get a sensible sustainable nutritional plan well the, the, the first thing would be why does somebody want to change so what what is the goal it could be just to maintain or or lose weight or or gain muscle or just include more nutrients in the diet if they weren't particularly healthy um so from that point of view they need to know that to start with it's not just a case of oh my mate uh dave is going on a diet so i'll do it as well for no reason whatsoever so there needs, there needs to be a reason that's going to be the motivation to then have an intervention um so yeah, let's say it was weight loss. It would be understanding what a calorie deficit is. And it's not a case of this is the diet that will work for you. It's a case of this is literally how the only way you will lose weight, end of period. Um, but from there, finding a sustainable means um, by which they're going to stick to it. So you talk about adherence. Calorie deficit is important, but adherence is the, the fundamental to success. 
Um, if you don't stick to that calorie deficit over time, then you aren't going to lose weight. So you're going to have to find lots of, of different ways to stick to it. Um, whether that's creating new habits, like going out for more walks, walking the dog at a certain time, uh, and small little changes with your diet. Um, so the fundamentals would be an understanding to start with. You must understand the basics and then keep it as simple as possible. Um, and from there, you, you talk about the, the schools. I agree that if kids understood what a calorie was, what a, a macronutrient was, what a micronutrient was, what you know your BMR, meat, um, eat, you know things like that are in terms of burning energy, then it's going to be a lot easier when they get to sort of 16, 17, 18, when perhaps you know weight does does creep on or they want to gain muscle um because you know the, the, yeah the, the kind of body dysmorphia in young men is probably drawn by a lack of education and you know they're they're exposed to seeing more people on social media that are on gear and they want to be like that um so eventually after a couple of years of trying and failing they just think oh screw it let's uh, you know either find out that those guys are actually on gear and then they, that's what they do uh so yeah it's, it's a difficult question but i would definitely just say the fundamental needs to be the understanding of the basic science to start with trust that incorporate that into as many of your life preferences as possible and um, so if you like going out for pizza with with your mates do that but understand that on, on the subsequent days you might have to lower your calories a little bit if you want to stick to your target um you know if, if you don't fancy going to a gym today fine it's not the end of the world but probably the next day or the day after, get back on it. You know, it's uh, people are kind of stuck in this all or nothing mentality, aren't they? When it doesn't have to be like that. You know, if you're if you're tracking your calories daily and you go over by several hundreds, people just stop and give up and they assume that it's over. But actually, if you just um, reduce your calories by a couple of hundred over the next few days, you would be back on track because it's a game of averages at the end of the day. Yeah, it's your weekly, um, almost your weekly calorie count. It's what I do. So the way I have, I have balance. Yeah. So I track. At the moment, I'm in a, in a, I'm in a uh, mild calorie deficit because I'm trying to get um, leaner without going, you know, mad and being overly restrictive. Because I'm still training very hard. My goal is to is to uh, you know reduce my body fat to then slowly add calories back in. To, to go into a, a much more of a muscle building phase. I obviously am building muscle while I'm doing it, but I, I am in a, in a calorie deficit at the moment. Chloe set my nutrition plan. I track everything. I weigh everything. I really enjoy the control uh, and I understand. But for example, this weekend, the, the England game was on. We got we got pumped by Wales um, and I was having some whiskey because I'm a big fan of that. Um, and I had some crisps and stuff and things. And I understood what I put in, but I went over my calories. But I didn't go, I'll put it in the fuck it bucket, as Chloe says, and just crack on. The next day, I woke up and I, um, I, you know, I, I, I added those calories into my next day using my fitness pal. I just moved across what I had in the morning. So I already started 500 calories down or 600 calories down. And then I just ate accordingly. And by today, again, I'm back fully on track. I've got no spare calories and I'm, I'm back eating normally. It's, it, is a, <laughs> it is as simple as that, right? And then I obviously know that if my body doesn't change in the next two weeks and I look at the scales or as a guide, I will then remove 200 calories and we go again. And um, I would probably take those calories out of, 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 of um, carbohydrates uh, because I keep, you know, protein is obviously the foundation of what I do and, and maybe I would reduce some fats but you, you do need fats in your diet. And, I, and that's what I would do. And that's all I would do, right? And, and that's... that's... You, 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 you sound like you, you understand the principle, you trust the process, and you're just doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's easier said than done, but, but you, um, you understand it. A lot of people, if, you know, sometimes it's not helpful to people just saying, this is so easy, why don't you just do it? Because they've got lots of other underlying reasons why they aren't doing it. You know, whether it's to do with their lifestyle or mental health, which which as a coach, you don't really know about. So, you know, sometimes you, you almost need to be a kind of therapist in a way with, with, with people. But online, you don't know these people. So you, you kind of just have to put the information out there and, and hope that they can kind of take it on board. But yeah, it sounds to you there, it's, it's very, very simple. I, I, I know you said it's, it's sometimes it's not as... Um simple as I'm making it sound, but I challenge you saying, I think it is. I think once you understand it, that is all it is. 
Yeah, I, if I was to, if you gave me the option of yes or no, I would select yes. So I, I would agree with you with that. I think um, you know the, the society that we live in now is very different to you know obviously we're, we weren't alive in the fifties or sixties. Um, these days there are a lot. There's a lot more access to hyper palatable um, processed fast foods, so cal- very calorie dense foods. And you know you can just t- tap an app on your phone, and it's at your place. You literally don't have to move off the couch. That wasn't available 50, 60 years, or even you know 10 years ago, really. Um, so yeah, people would physically have to get up, walk, or get in their car, go there to get those same foods. So they'd technically be burning energy. Whereas now, um, uh, you know, technology has has helped us do things where we don't have to move anymore. Um, things like that have definitely played into it. But as you say, if you're educated on the result of, of your behaviors and your decisions, it, it shouldn't really matter. You should understand that, okay, I've just ordered this fast food. It's 1,500 calories. I've been sitting on the couch for the last eight hours watching TV. Here we go. Um, so ultimately, it, it will always come back to that education of knowing what's actually going on, what you're doing. And uh, I, I, I genuinely do think there is space to do that in schools um, carefully, um, you know, not telling people that they must, you know, track calories all the time, just telling people what they are and what they do. And, uh, you know, cal- things like calorie counting isn't a diet, I, I always say. People always say, oh, I've stopped Slimming World and I'm now doing calorie counting. It's like, no, you didn't. You, you stopped, uh, you know, a, a diet club, which takes you further away from the principle, doesn't even tell you anything about energy balance for you know basically doing the one thing that puts you into bed with understanding how many calories are consuming it's the closest thing you can do to understanding what you need to do for your goal um that's all you're doing it's basically just like counting um it's like a bank balance isn't it you know uh, people people always say that you know are are you obsessed if, if you count calories but it's like hang on do you count your bank balance do you have a look at that all the time do you you know, expenditure versus income, you probably do have to have a, a degree of <laughs> anticipation of what's going to be going on there. Otherwise, you're going to be you know, homeless. The <laughs> house is going to get repossessed. So, um, yeah, I, I think in terms of blueprint, it's interesting that the government hasn't done anything in terms of that. They are taking the easy option out. Um, but they don't understand it. Them, Look at the size of well, They don't understand that's the it. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> No, that, that is the thing is you, at the end of the day, with all these things, you're dealing with human beings and it just depends what that human being believes in sometimes. And so if you've got all these government officials, I um, don't know how many there are involved in kind of tackling the obesity epi- epidemic, but say there was 50 people tasked with gathering data, doing surveys, thinking about solutions. Of those 50 people, if 35 of them don't even understand what, what calorie deficit is. I'm pretty sure I'd hope they would. Um, but if, if they don't understand, then what chance have, has, has the rest of the nation got? What what chance have other people got of, of learning how to understand the basics? So just playing devil's advocate. So so some of the things... Now, we, we, we obviously know the, the actual fundamental answer is, is that uh, none of these do. But I want to talk about some common things that have got to make you fat. Fast food, does it make you fat? No. Does alcohol <laughs> make you fat? No. Does chocolate make you fat? No. Does big cakes make you fat? No. Do pizza make you fat? Nope. Um, Chris make, does fat, Chris yeah. make does Chris make you fat? No. <laughs> okay. Does avocado make you skinny? No. Does salad make you skinny? No. Does juicing make you skinny? Nope. <sighs> Well, you've completely ruined my whole. That was my <laughs> entire. That was my entire knowledge of nutrition. There, you've just blown that up. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, so none of those make. Okay, so we've, we've, so let's. We've got a few things in stone here. So, calorie deficit is basically the, the, the foundation to everything and understanding calories. But nobody needs. Nobody seems to understand that. But we're gonna. We're gonna. Graham, you and I are gonna. We're gonna put a foot down. And we're gonna help educate. We've discovered that a whole load of things. A miracle here. So, hear it first on James Haskell's What a Flank of a Podcast. We have discovered that chocolate don't make you fat, crisps don't make you fat, salad don't make you thin. Do soups, just because a couple more quickly, does soup make you thin? No. Okay. Um, does a pasta salad make you thin? No. Okay. Do, 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 do specific meals from uh, sl- uh, slay uh, Weight Watchers, 
Does one of their shakes make you thin? Nope. Does one of their shakes make you fat? Nope. Ah! Uh, okay, this is just too... I can't I can't believe it here. We are literally... This is like a goal. I can't, this, is, uh, this is madness. Okay. Are you, are you basically suggesting that all of these misconceptions... Uh, over the years have been not not true no don't don't <laughs> tell me that none of this is true okay okay fine fine okay because we, we might this might be going over some people's heads so let's let's look at some of the stuff that's being recommended um out here and you can tell me what the reason is is why people are losing weight okay Fa- <laughs> fasting so the reason the reason fasting work it only works for weight loss is if somebody's in a calorie deficit, so burning more calories than they consume. Doesn't, Fine. doesn't matter what time they eat over over time. Yeah, I had, I had an amazing bloke who sat down. So I was at one of these studios, not not this specific place, but a studio for. And this kid was working, and he was we were listening and talking about nutrition and health. And he went, "Well, I'm fasting." I went, oh, how, how's that working? And he goes, well, it's great. It's fasting. It's great, right? So what I do is I do 14-12 uh, or 16-12, whatever it is, right? And then I can eat what I want. I went, no, 16, you can't. 16-8. 16-8. Yeah. And, and he goes, eat what you want. I said, no, you can't. He goes, no, I can. I can. I can. It's weight loss. I said, no, you can't. And he's like, why? I said, because all you're doing is fitting the calories that you were going to have across the day into one fucking section, and you're probably eating more in that section because you have starved yourself uh, and that is what you're doing. So actually, you're in a worse place than you were before. And he was like, "No, no," because they, they, they said it's for it's for weight loss. I went, "No, no, fasting for health benefits for literally like you know looking after your body for like um, taking pressure off your digestive system to help release certain things uh, and for just general health. Fantastic for for weight loss. No, unless you are in a what, Graham." A calorie deficit. Right, yeah, exactly. Uh, so stop fucking fasting, fasting you idiot. Stop doing it. It's it's one of those that if you've eaten breakfast your entire life and you enjoy it and it helps you function, to stop that seems absolutely crazy, you know. But if you're somebody who could take breakfast or leave it, skipping it, which is essentially what intermittent fasting is, um, it might help you get into a calorie deficit. Okay. But then again, as you say, for those eight hours that you eat, you you know. If you just don't track anything or don't understand, you could be yeah, eating a calorie surplus. You'd, you know, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pointless unless you you know are in a calorie deficit. Okay, if, and I'm going to say this caveat: so if you were successful at Slimming World, why would you have been successful? Because you're in a calorie deficit as well. Um, yeah, people always say I lost weight on Slimming World. It's like no, you didn't. You lost weight because you burnt more calories than you. Than okay, you okay, so that's uh, despite to- the fact. No matter what sins or free foods, whatever dross they kind of bring up. Um, yeah, and the thing is with that, if somebody's morbidly obese and they all of a sudden start eating more vegetables and things like that on Slimming World, um, then probably will lose lose weight. But on the other side, they have this thing where you have unlimited foods and it's like pasta, salmon, eggs. <laughs> but these things are quite calorie dense. Salmon, you know, like, salmon. This is another one. Sorry, I know you're going to go there, but salmon, yeah. right. People go, oh, I'm really healthy. I had a pasta sal- salad before bed. I'm like, pasta's like quite calorie dense if you're, uh, you know, uh, and also salmon, that's probably one of those calorific fishes you can get yeah. out there. Like it, I have pasta salad. So <laughs> Chloe makes like um, her salmon spaghetti, but I have to be careful. Like if I smash in two salmon fillets, everything else like that, and the pasta. And the pasta comes from, comes out, the amount of eating was like 400 calories. The salmon's like 400. That's like an 800 calorie meal. And, I, and I've only got yeah. 3,100 calories to eat per, per day. But carry on. Sorry. No, yeah, absolutely. These, this concept of unlimited foods is entirely designed to attract people in to, you know, basically tell them you can eat as many of these as you like. But as, as you know, um, it's, it's really poor, you know, it's, uh, in, in my opinion. And uh, labeling foods as sins as well which the word sin i think they've, they've changed the spelling of it and they say it counts for synergy it's just like a cop out yeah. i think they got some criticism and thought yeah 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 yeah, yeah. synergy <laughs> synergy what, what, what relevance has that got synergy to what what's your, <laughs> your body's function bollocks it's but okay i don't know and yeah things like weight watchers are similar but they have like a point system and it's like guys come on you, you're, you're pulling people away from the principle to inflict your method so that they buy into that method um, you know, in, instead of understanding what they actually need to do. Okay, so if I lost weight... Yeah, we, can, we can see it. If I lost weight at Weight Watchers, why would I have lost weight? It would have been because you're in a, a calorie deficit. Okay, yeah. okay. If I drunk, yeah. if I drunk 
say I was eating normally and then the next day I decided to drink slim fast because I was like sweet and I had and what I had is because this is what the advert goes you have a shake in the morning you have a shave at lunch and then you have a nice meal in the evening is it the magic is there the magic in the shakes like is there like is it a magic thing that works really well or why would it be that I would have lost weight so with these kind of meal replacement type things, the, the shakes would normally be something like two to two hundred calories, um, and they, you know most meals that you would normally eat would be higher than that. Um, so yeah, if you're replacing meals with shakes that are, you know, a quarter of not a quarter but a third of the calories, say, and you do that, it's just because you're consuming fewer calories. You're going to be miserable in the process, and you're you know not getting the amount of micronutrients that you, you, you should be able to get for your functional health as well. So there's no rocket science there. You're, you're basically saying starving yourself is a bit extreme, but you're just stopping eating your normal meals for a shake that's a lot lower in calories. Um, okay. Okay. Well, I've been online. Yeah. I've been online and my favorite reality star says that they have lost a load of weight in the last 10 days because they've been drinking um, ketones right and that's what they drink they drink that throughout the day so if i drunk ketones just for the day and i was and i stopped eating normally why uh, does it work or why would i have lost the weight away just out of interest the ketones ketones uh, magic. so unless they're just drinking that and not eating anything i don't know <laughs> if, if they're just eating a eating meals as well yeah then you know you'd have to factor in how many calories that they're eating surprise surprise um but no, those those supplements. Uh, there's just no there's no reason to have them at the right. end of the day. Um, so, so if you did just you know, have that, you would just be in a calorie deficit, and that's why it would have worked. Yeah, I think, I think people uh, on the keto diet itself, it's obviously removing as many carbohydrates as possible and eating sort of protein and fats. Um, and what tends to happen when people cut carbs out is within a, a period of ten days, if there's if there's going to be, or was it ten pounds in a week that they lost or yeah. something. Um, Presumably, they were on a keto diet if they were doing keto supplements. Um, what happens is because when you eat carbs, you tend to store more water weight. Um, if you cut them out, that water weight sort of disappears. So people do report you know, larger degrees of weight loss initially when they go on the keto diet. But research shows it's actually water as opposed to body fat. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's really frustrating when, when you sort of see that. But, yeah... Th- Keto seems to be a trend now, so they'll stick it on a supplement. Fine. Um, okay. It's not going to do anything. It's going to do nothing. No. It's going to be basically <laughs> drinking a, night, a, a raspberry flavored drink, which probably tastes quite nice, but um, yeah, it's, it's not going to achieve okay. anything. Okay, really. I need the next one. The 5 2 diet. My, my, this is my parents' generation. Someone, my godfather reco- 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 actually recommended to my parents the 5 2 diet. Was it because for five days you eat normally and uh, five days you eat. Um, you know, sort of restricted, and then on for the two days you have um, whatever you want, and you lose weight. Why would that be? Is it because your body knows that you're only eating on two days, or would it? What would it, the reason be behind that? So, so it's nothing to do with the days and the calories you eat on those days, as the diet would kind of have you believe. It's just over a period of time, like seven days, on average, you are in a state of calorie deficit, and right. presumably because on on some of those days you're eating 500 calories. I think. Yeah, I think it is. is yeah. A lot lower than uh, anyone, any adult should be eating. It's probably about a third of the, you know, uh, of the calories of the smallest female, um, you know, in terms of height and weight. The ketosis diet that you, or, or, or that you talked about, actually, from, uh, from having read about it and done some studies on it, the the and listened to what Chloe, in terms of something to help your body in a disease state and the health benefits of it, fine. As a weight loss tool, absolutely not. And I think that's why people are getting confused. Like I see, I see people online again. The extremes, the dogma of like people just slagging. Um, ketosis off and it's like yeah as a, as, a, as a fat loss thing no one's no one's no one's fucking advocating it for fat loss you know but if you had a disease state i if i had a diseased body and i was suffering from something i'd go into ketosis because it you know the healing benefits of it are are proven there's the science to show it but yeah. it's me using it as, as a fat loss tool again it comes down to a, a, a calorie deficit so i just think there's something to flag up there because again people don't bother doing the research they'll just hear a, they'll hear a segment and they'll just they'll just lose the plot and i think Online, this brings on to the nice last bit is the, is the extremes. So, you is that the b- biggest reaction you've had to anything? Because we just don't seem to have any kind of level headed thought. And you put that about Diet Coke. Was that the biggest sort of reaction you've had, or do you have had more? So, the Diet Coke one is, is up there. Um, sugar posts are up there. Um, but 
the Game Changers post I did was up there because a lot of angry vegans... They're always uh, angry because they, they fucking haven't had a proper meal. I'd be, you'd be angry. <laughs> you'd be angry if you had, you had a, is, if you're eating a bro- bucket of broccoli, incomplete, uh, incomplete protein sauce, going, I'm eating a load of protein. I get more protein in a bucket of broccoli than you do in a chicken breast. Yeah, but it's not your body can't do anything with it. It's not complete protein. So, But anyway, that's another side of the point. Yeah, uh, the, th- the thing is that the morality of veganism, fine. The mor- morality of anything... Fine, that's your decision. But if you start using science to actually argue that that's a, a you know, a, say healthier diet than one that can involve animal products, no, there's no science for yeah. that. I'd say that one, um, the avocado versus Nutella is is up there as well because people just can't seem to separate the idea that energy balance defines your body weight and micronutrients defines functional health. So my argument was. This avocado toast in this portion has more calories than this Nutella toast in this portion. Therefore, this avocado post, uh, avocado toast will result in you consuming more calories. But it's obviously got more nutrients in it. So here you go. There's the information. Take it as you wish. And people reply saying, how can you do this? How can you compare the two? And, and I think it's a lot of people are very angry, as you know, on social media. And um, it's almost like finding something to get offended about. And without looking deeper into some, something that they see, they immediately get triggered and their confirmation bias is wounded and they just want to project. And Conf- they'll confirmation bias. Sorry to interrupt you. Confirmation bias is the, the key thing because I did, I did all these interviews, as I said, and people, the journalists, so the journalists interviewing me, right, and, and, I, and basically this is goes out to my opening statement, nobody has a fucking clue about nutrition. Politicians don't. Teachers don't. Most doctors don't, most humans don't, most journalists don't, most interviewers don't. For the sole reason that people people said to me this, well, you know, it's easy for you because, you know, you've all been a professional athlete, you're in shape. No, no, once you're in shape, you have to stay in shape. It's not a magic formula. I didn't do all the training and I've got a good training age. I've got a good reactive body. I still have to stay in shape. The next thing is that um, people go, yeah, but surely you must have like balance is if if you don't eat junk food, then you're not a, a, not a balance. And people go, this is the other statement. Well, you know, it's pretty shocking, isn't it, during lockdown that all the fast food restaurants stayed open, um, you know, because obviously fast food's bad for you. No, no. Let me just explain that to you. There are better food choices. There are better things for you. But fast food, you can finish the sentence, doesn't make you... Fat, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and to be honest, within those um, fast food outlets, there are varying, you know, um, quantities of calories within the meals. Um, I did a post on it recently, you know, going to McDonald's or Burger King, KFC, you know, depending on what you select, there are options there that are going to be, you know, a couple of thousand calories, but there's also options there that are similar quantity of food, similar palatable experience, the same taste, but actually it's like 800 calories fewer. So it's just, you know, understanding that instead of saying fast food's bad, cut it out, you know, you can still have it, but there are, you know, choices that are going to support your goal a little bit more and uh, very kind of basic basic stuff but it's interesting that you say about the the reporter just assuming that about you um you know just assuming that yeah you don't you don't have to do anything you to, to look the way that you do i mean i called them on it I, 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 I called them on it all of them i stopped mid sentence and i said i said but it's got nothing to do with fast food people it's got nothing to do with me you know being an athlete i still have to train now if i if i just ate what i wanted now and and you know when people say about intuitive eating you know they say you know your body knows what you should eat right this again this was a whole other podcast but all my body tells me to do is drink corona and eat pizza I would say pretty much consistently throughout the day, it says that. And then it says donuts. It just says donuts a lot of the time. Like I have a coffee and it's like, you need a millionaire shortbread, James. Like you need, you like your body needs that. That's all I have in my head the whole time. And I doesn't matter. I've been training for years. I understand my diet, but there's no way I'd listen to my fucking, my, the voice in my head. Cause it would, A, I'd, get, I'd, I'd probably arrest it. And B, I would be so obese. You'd have to roll me out of the house um, but which I just, yeah, I mean, it's madness. Yeah. I think the, the intuitive eating one is, is something that is, you know, again, absolutely fine for, for somebody who just wants to find peace with food they're eating. And maybe they've been affected by diet culture in a negative way. And they have traumatic, a lot of this is down to people having traumatic experiences in the past, shaping extreme beliefs now, but intuitive eating as an intervention for, you know, losing fat or even you know gaining muscle um like you say is 
if you did a survey of, of you know what foods people enjoy the most donuts pizza what drinks corona uh wine or broccoli chicken breasts you know water a large proportion of those people would be selecting the high calorie dense processed um nutrition sparse foods really um so there does have to be an a degree of accountability there you know i know for, for me personally I love having things like pizzas or, you know, the occasional bit of fast food or chocolate or whatever. But then I'll I'll make myself like a balanced meal full of vegetables and stuff. I'll know that I'll enjoy the pizza more, but I know there has to be a degree of balance there. Um, you know, so, yeah, it's interesting people's mindsets, isn't it? What do you think... <sighs> Where do you think your industry is going to go in terms of this now? Because um, in regards to, to the social media and the extremes, because you've managed to, I think your, your video is educational. I don't think you you drop the C-bomb. I don't think you go mad. I think you're balanced. I think the reason you found the success you have, because you've, you know, uh, I mean, guttingly, you've got way more followers than I am, which is like a real, like, stab in the stab in the heart. Um, <laughs> but you, you managed to find the balance. But I, I, all I see for your industry is more extremes, more vocal, more trolling, more dogma, and, and absolutely no um, no common ground. And I, I know you, you, you're, you don't mind, as we talked about in the opening comments, those people who do get extreme. But I think, you know, I swear sometimes for emphasis, but I don't... I think if you're swearing too much or you're being calling people out, you're going after individual people instead of messages, I, I think it just perpetuates the problem. I don't know what you feel about that. Yeah, I think if you're going after someone individually, they ha you have to have something balanced to back it up. And it's not just like a personal attack. Um, if somebody was doing something that was really unethical or just false, then yes, sometimes it can be useful to go out and you know point out what they're doing is wrong, because ultimately it helps to educate uh, people about what is evidence at the end of the day. But I think there's definitely... It just seems like in the, the nutrition industry, there's a lot of people just shouting and shouting and shouting. And when somebody has success with, you know, for example, if you think about, you know, people like James Smith or myself with a large amount of followers, and there's a lot more people who are more evidence-based, um, you know, telling people to think about energy balance as opposed to demonizing foods. And, you know, ultimately are, are helping people lose, lose weight. Because there's success there and there's a lot of traction behind it, ultimately there's going to be an opposing opinion that comes to that. And that could be something like anti-diet. So people saying, anybody who tells you, uh, you know, that a calorie deficit helps you lose weight, it's diet culture. Don't listen to them. You know, they're, they're trying to tell you you need to do all this. So that's extreme. And then in a few years' time, when people get sick of that and have had enough, it'll be back onto something more extreme on the other side again. Um, I think that's kind of the last sort of three or four years, the, the calorie deficit has come back in because people were getting so sick of all the kind of, uh, you know, the, the superfoods out there and, and all the kind of rhetoric of diet culture. You know, like cauliflower rice, for Christ's sake. I mean, Jesus Christ, if you, if you want to eat rice, eat rice. If you want to eat cauliflower, eat cauliflower. And it was just getting perpetuated everywhere. Um, so I think it stinks ultimately as well. that's, that's social media and it stinks. I've never tried it. Oh my God. Because I know Chloe likes it because of like, you know, because of the fiber content. So the filling, the, you know, the, na the nature of filling up or, or her yeah. making a swap because of, of it being slightly less calories than, than, than the rice. So she, you know, she obviously, if she's in a calorie restrictive state, people, you have to make smarter choices because you still want to have that satiety. You still want to be full, but you swap stuff out. But she she eats them and some of them zero, zero noodles. And it's like someone's yeah. shat in a pocket. Like I, want to, I, I, I go in the kitchen, I've got a really sensitive smell. And I'm like, ah, I'm like, what? Like, I keep looking around at the dog. I'm like, and then I realise she's washing the noodles in the, in the, in the thing. And like, I, you've got to admire because it's, it's sensible. She she knows exactly what she's eating to put into her body to fill her up. That makes the right calorie decisions. That has the right nutritional profile for her. But you're right. Like I, it's the same thing with Chloe. She always said to me. She goes I'll go dinner. She go dinner time. I go right. I can't have a steak and everything else. So she goes. Oh, can you have chips? And I started when I started going out with her. I was like, oh, I can't have chips, but I can't have oven cheese. That's fat. And fatness. But fat. Even I felt it. She went. No, no, it's actually a really good source of carbohydrates, and they're not that fat. That you know, not that fat, and it's actually not that amount of calories. It's probably the same as if you're having a thing of rice or pasta. And I was like, "Oh my god, why have I been?" Let I was I fell foul 
of that. I fell for yeah. it because I was like, oh, it's got to be bad for you. It's got to be bad for you. And I was like, no, I can have chips. If I want to have chips, I'll have chips. Why not have them? The, the amount of Nando's between the age of 18 to 22 that I had, and I selected the rice instead of the chips. Honestly, it's one of my biggest regrets in life. <laughs> I love because that. I, That's I your biggest just, regret. I was under the, the same, <laughs> honestly, it is. When I look back at that every month sometimes, like, you know, lying in bed, I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, what was I thinking? Lying in bed, not sleeping, not sleeping, sleeping yeah. drinking a diet coke, just staring at the ceiling, going, <laughs> yeah. "Fuck! Why did I not go for chips, mate? That's a bad uh, thing." Just, and my mates were having them as well. So, like, what was I thinking? And looking at you know, spicy rice was, was probably you know higher calories than the chips anyway. Just you know, ridiculous it's... decisions, really. But yeah, talking about like smells, the the pad tie from my my book has. When I was experimenting with it, I was looking around at you know, how do you make the pad, pad test? It's like fish sauce, okay. Put it in there. I was like, are you serious? This stuff absolutely stinks. But when you taste it, obviously, it's nice. But it's like, what? This, this, this does not smell good. <laughs> no, no, my, no. Follower, my followers are messaging me going, or tagging me and going, pad tie, tastes amazing. But Jesus, Graham, that absolutely stinks when you make it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, just have, have some air fresheners in the kitchen. You'll be fine. Open a window. <laughs> so I mean, so I mean, obviously, we're not going to solve we're not going to solve everything on this podcast. But if you, because of what I really like about you is I think that we haven't we yes we've 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 gone after a few people, but I think because we're evidence based, science based, I think these are factual. It's, it's not it's not anecdotal. Like I remember some I saw some woman the other day I, I reposted it saying that diet culture was a capitalist thing and I, and basically exercise and everything else. And I and I've never heard so many excuses of getting out of PE and eating well in my entire life. I was like. She was like using huge words, so much rhetoric, and it was basically like, "I just don't. I like. Eat, I want to be fat. I don't want to, and I don't. I don't want to train." I was like, "Babe, I just own that. Own that. Don't like wrap it up." And I think that you're considered, and I think people, if, if they want to follow you, where can they find you on Instagram? So it's the Fitness Chef with an underscore uh, on Instagram, and yeah, Facebook is the Fitness Chef, and website fitnesschef.uk. Basically, just type in. The fitness, the fitness chef, chef. And you'll find me somewhere <laughs> and i think you've got i've got you come across a level-headed you're not um overly aggressive you're not offensive and i think that's what more people need to be in this uh industry i think sometimes you've got to say controversial things like i did in my post to capture people's attentions because there is so much noise out there but if you if you were going to leave my followers with three things before you go or the people who listen to what a flank because we've talked about what would be your three lessons just to 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 get the ball rolling to to you know to help potentially change your approach to to nutrition and to foods uh, i think the, the number one thing it's always difficult but the the information that you look at is key so if somebody looks at stuff that is unproven instead of stuff that is you know it's like how do you know what to believe but i think having a basic understanding of the, of the basics has to be the first step um so if somebody was you know, wanting to change their body composition, for example, they have to understand about energy balance before they do do anything else at the end of the day. And I think, you know, the next point would be simplifying it as much as possible. So I always talk about, you know, in incorporating as many of your existing preferences of your lifestyle that you enjoy into any goal that you have. And cutting, you, you don't have to cut anything out in terms of food or lifestyle. Um, you probably just have to understand moderation of that so if you talk about specific foods um if you want to consume more nutrients or lose weight you don't have to cut anything out you maybe just have to eat a little bit less of it or you know see what opportunities there are available to adjust the foods that you're eating in terms of you know reducing the calories in, in the recipes you're eating um and i think the third thing <laughs> all these things cliches don't they but it would be to to enjoy it so if you're if you're miserable with your intervention, with your diet, whatever the, the goal is, you're probably not going to stick to it for, for very long. And if you do stick to it for a period of time and then you stop it because you've achieved your goal, you, you might not have learned anything and you'll just relapse into the, the habits that were creating the existing problems. Um, so it's to, to enjoy the process as well um, at the end of the day. And everybody has a different goal. And I know that I talk a lot about weight loss um, and, and we've talked a lot about that on this podcast. Um, but for some people, it might just be improving their relationship with food. So for people who are kind of traumatized by diet culture um, for years, then, you know, eating a donut might be you know, successful for them. Whereas someone else 
success is saying no to the donut because it'll put them over their calories for the for the day or whatever it is. So everybody's goal is different. Um, but I think ultimately a lot of the same principles apply to, to all of us in terms of energy balance, uh, consuming as many nutrients as possible. And, you know, a high protein diet is shown to be beneficial to pretty much all fitness goals that you have, whether it's building muscle or losing weight. Um, and yeah, keep, keeping things very simple. And I think the last point would be choosing carefully who you listen to, because it's very easy to get kind of brainwashed into one particular method, I think question everything that you sort of see and I always say that to my followers is here's some information here if you want to discuss it in a polite manner that's great I'll, I'll tell you more about it if you're going to offend me personally and tell me I'm wrong then there's probably no point in discussing things because no matter what I say you've got your your tunnel vision um yeah just being open-minded as well um would, is always going to be a, a good idea I think. I, th- I think that's I think that I think that's brilliant information. I think um I'd bolt I'd maybe bolt one onto it as well and just say that um exactly what you said. Look at you know, look look in who you follow, like you said, look at who you who you take the information from. Do actually do your research. Uh I would say that, you know, dispel any preconceptions you've had from from other people. So, you know, the the idea that eating healthy costs more is is the implication that you can't eat normally you have to go out and buy specialist foods and have to buy specialist which is just utter bollocks and that i think people can change their life for whatever and nobody should ever tell you what you should look like but there are ways and means of 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 doing it and i think um everything you've said sort of really resonated with uh with me and i think it's fascinating i think you're, you're one of the good guys in the industry fighting a good fight we've obviously got a couple of books out um where can people get these what they're called so book one is eat what you like and lose weight for life um and it's not to say that you can just eat donuts forever because if you enjoy them you don't eat them um it's, it's a, an educational tool um and basically just empowering people with, with the information that they need to make their informed choices so there's a bit of uh science to, you know broken down into simple terms there and a few recipes and then book two still tasty is a recipe book um, and what my idea behind that was to create lower calorie versions of, you know, popular foods. So I put it to a poll on my Instagram or, or you know, a, a story and I was like, what's your favorite meals? And I just sifted through them. It took me so long. And it was things like lasagnas, pizzas, burgers, you know, cheesecakes, um, sticky toffee pudding. And I was like, right, I'm going to show people that they can still eat all of these. They can still eat them in their high calorie form. Absolutely fine. So that's the tasty part of it, but this, you can still make it tasty by reducing the calories very easily. And here's how, and it's things like in, in a lasagna, for example, just swapping out uh, mints for 5% fat mints that taste the same, eating the same quantity, swapping full, full fat cheese for reduced fat cheese, sw- swapping the cheese sauce for creme fraiche that's half fat, all, all these types of things. And all of a sudden you've made four changes using the same quantity of food it tastes pretty much the same, but it's miles lower in calories. So it's it's going to help you basically get into a calorie deficit without having to, you know, do any crazy diet. Um, so that's the kind of idea behind that. Very, very simple. You know, I was stressed about it at the start because I was like, I'm not a chef, despite the, the name. Um, but yeah, I think they taste pretty good as well. That's that's the fundamental to it as well, not just the, the calories in it. They have to taste good. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty proud of them, and um, hopefully they can keep selling. Well, Graham, thank you so much. That was Graham Tomlinson. Um, thank you so much for for coming on, the fitness chef. This has been What a Flank of the Podcast. If you like the podcast, then please subscribe, please share, please leave your feedback, good or bad. Just feedback is all that I need. Um, we're obviously a YouTube show as well as a podcast across all of your usual regular listening and viewing platforms, Graham. I'm off to eat a McDonald's. I'm joking. <laughs> or maybe I'm not. I'm going to have some French toast, actually. Lovely. Sign me up for that and get some vitamin D. Cheers.